let's get into it. Let's see if this is gonna work. I have no idea. Let's see if this video makes it onto the internet. If it did, I like the results. Just want to, oh my gosh. Welcome to today's video. As you can probably hear in my voice, I think I'm coming down with something. My voice is always the first thing to go, so yay, love that for me. The video I was going to put out this week is taking a little bit longer to come together because rookie mistake, I didn't account for the drying time. So today, instead of missing an upload, I thought maybe I would try to put out a quick video. We'll see if this is gonna work or not. I'm not sure. The concept for today's video. I have some grayscale paintings and I've been thinking about using color on top of grayscale. Now, I've seen the old masters do it, so it must be possible, right? A lot of times they did uh, monochrome, uh, what is that called? Monochromatic? Is that the word? Yeah, it's a monochromatic underpainting and then glaze color on top. So I thought, okay, sure, let's experiment with this. Why not, right? So I'm going to take this grayscale painting, which I've done, which I have already put a layer of glaze on top of it. Now, according to the experts from what I hear, you can put two passes of glaze on top of it before you need to reseal it again with an alkyd layer. So I'm gonna try to glaze a layer of color on top of this today and just see what happens because I've been kind of thinking of a painting series where I play around with the juxtaposition of grayscale and color. And I wanted to see if this was a way to do it or if this would even look cool or how far you can push glaze in order to make it actually revive a color in an object. I'm not sure. So anyways, today is just a real big experimentation. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's see if this is gonna work. I have no idea. Let's see if this video makes it onto the internet. If it did, I liked the results. So <laughs> we'll see. I have my items for reference. Uh, these were, well, it's not the original pair, but <laughs> close enough. Um, so that I have something to reference the color of. I'm not sure if I want to match it 100% or try to bring it up this chromatic or whether I just want to, oh my gosh, drop the pair. Uh, now it is a bruised pair. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure if I want to try to match exactly the color in the chroma or whether I want to just do it faintly or I'm not sure. For a reason to look the other way. Gradients are kind of going to be the most vibrant-ish. I want my shadows to maybe, what was in this still life? It was kind of blue and yellow and white. So maybe do I want to go, do I want to go a little bit colder in the shadows? Although these objects are kind of cold, so maybe I want to go warm in my shadows. So I'll maybe do an umber type of a deal. I think maybe I want to start with color. Let's start with color. We'll do our shadow after. So, blue so let's see i mean it looks fairly close on the camera but in person it's a little a little off i don't know if i add let's just see put it on and see what happens has these indents in it, which caught the light a little bit. I was never quite able to like capture that. So maybe we can capture that a little bit in lights here, just by lightening up some of these areas. I found the original photo, because obviously this isn't set up in my still life box anymore, so not quite seeing it the way that it was in the box, but I found my old reference photo. This is my problem! I get in and then it's like, oh, Let's add a little bit of this blue in here. So I'm going to highlight her reflection. Highlights back up to where they were. Rim is kind of black. How do I want to do that? Just want to do this very thinly and just see if I can get this. It has this little bit of a black glaze, the actual pottery to cut. Watch me mess this up.
color into this pear. This is quite yellow too. The pear is quite well, it's kind of got a bit of a greener undertone. Maybe it should add some green to this. I really like the way that that white, you know, just like elevated the ramp can there just a little bit. I like that. Clay's mixture, I'm using half alkyd, 50% alkyd, 50% linseed oil, and then I'm just uh, making sure that my paint to um, add mixture ratio is 50-50. So always making sure that there's 50% paint to I don't have my board on here because it's I've got my other painting on it, I'll try to turn it around. So I can't take it and turn it around. Anyways. There's my thing. I probably overuse fan brushes. I like them. Take all my brush strokes out. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, it's a little yellow, although. takeaways from glazing on top of a monochromatic background. The color of your background matters. It didn't necessarily come into effect as much on the cup, but I found that the pear, I was having a really hard time getting rid of that toned gray look because it made the pear look very fake or very dead or <laughs> it just wasn't quite the right color. So, but I think that's because obviously glaze is slightly transparent. So you're going to see that undertone underneath. So if you want to do this with some really rich, warm kind of yellows or earth tones and you kind of have to use an earth tone underneath so burnt umber or something else like that obviously which is what a lot of the old masters kind of did i really enjoyed seeing the cup come together i felt like that went on really chromatically and it was really easy to get that chroma up to um, full vibrancy i was kind of expecting like i was kind of thinking about playing around with this with using a gray scale but then having a very like light wash of color, but I'm not 100% sure how I would do that. I would have to really dull down the glaze colors in order to get that kind of an effect because even just a very thin pass, very first pass, boom, the color was right there. So it was kind of neat. I didn't expect that to happen, but there we go. I really like the way the white came on, uh, the way it brought up the brightness of those objects like the inside of the cup and on the ram can. Um, because I was using a gray scale on this one, I didn't quite, I guess maybe I just didn't build it up bright enough the first time so that was kind of neat to be able to bring up those whites and make them a little bit brighter on the pair because that background is gray and i think because it's in a sea of gray i didn't i decided not to glaze in the background or the tabletop i just left that gray so i think that's kind of playing into the color and the tone of that pair which i wasn't quite happy with the way that it turned out but it was kind of neat to see what you can do if it had been a brown or burnt umber undertone I think that would have really brought the richness of those yellows and those purples and things like that 
up. So that would kind of been neat. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much, friends, for being here. Thank you to all the new people that are here. I'm just so excited for your support and for your subscribing to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, if you did like this video, please give it a big old thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, friends. Bye.